In Turbo Studio 3.3.0, we added a new way to control in which order stimuli are shown to study participants to the two ways that were already there. My name is Annalie and I'm a UX designer here at Turbo Pro. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use these three ways of working in Turbo Studio. Here we can see the Design and Record tab of Turbo Studio. At the top left, we have three buttons depicting the three different presentation modes available. These presentation modes give you the ability to change and control the order in which elements on the timeline are presented to participants. As you can see, we already have four image elements imported onto the timeline. The elements are given the element names image 1 to 4 to make it easier to demonstrate the differences between the presentation modes. The first mode is direct order. With this mode selected, all participants will see the elements in the order that is shown on the timeline. In this case, image 1, image 2, image 3 and image 4. The second mode is called counterbalance mode. In this example, I have selected all of the elements for counterbalancing. This is indicated by the counterbalance symbol on each element on the timeline. The method for counterbalancing used in Turbo Studio is to follow a Latin square. When in counterbalance mode, you need to select which elements you would like to counterbalance, whether it be all of them or just some of them. To do this, you right click on an element and select either counterbalance elements or counterbalance all. The third and newly added mode is called presentation sequences mode. This mode makes it possible to decide the order of timeline elements shown to participants individually for each recording. This means that it's possible to show all or just some of the elements on the timeline in a selected, predefined order to a participant in a study during a single recording. The only limitation to the order definition is that the same element cannot be shown more than once during the same recording. To specify the different versions of the timeline that will be used in a test, a file that outlines the permutations of the element presentation order must be created. The permutations have to be given unique names that later can be selected when doing the recordings. In Turbo Studio, each permutation of the timeline will be called a sequence, as it is a sequence of elements from the timeline. Element types that cannot be used in presentation sequences are external video and scene camera elements. In order to create sequences to use, we recommend the following workflow. Step 1. Add the elements you want to use in your test to the timeline. The timeline will act as your library of media elements. Ensure that you give each element a unique name, as the name will be used to identify the element in the imported presentation sequences. In our case, we have already imported the elements named image 1, image 2, image 3 and image 4. Step 2. Click on the Presentation Sequences icon in the Turbo Studio toolbar to open the Presentation Sequences menu. Step 3. Select Export and save your file to a location where you can easily find it. This file will contain the presentation sequences currently active in the system, i.e. sequences currently imported and selectable for recordings. If you have not imported any before, the file will only contain what is shown on the timeline. Step 4. Open the exported file in a text editor of your choice. A recommended option for editing the file is to use Microsoft Excel, as Excel will help preserve the formatting and allows for quick and easy copy-pasting of elements to new sequences. If opening the file in Microsoft Excel, you'll be presented with a choice of what format best describes your data. Select the delimited option. You also need to provide some information about the file in the file origin drop-down list. Select the option 65001 Unicode UTF-8 in order for the file to be imported correctly. Once these selections have been made, click Finish to complete opening the file. Step 5. The first row in the file is used to show the positions available for the elements. The subsequent rows start with the name of the sequence in the first position and continues with the element names of the elements to be included in that sequence. Each row represents one sequence i.e. element order. Create as many sequences as you want to use for your recordings. Step 6. Once the sequences have been created, save the file in a tab-separated format, either as a TXT or a TSV file. If using Microsoft Excel, 
save the file as Unicode text to ensure correct formatting during import into Toby Studio. Step 7. In Toby Studio, click on the Presentation Sequences icon and select the Import option. Select the file you want to import in the file browser that opens. If you previously have imported presentation sequences, you will be presented with the option to replace or add. If you select replace, all previously imported sequences will be deleted and replaced by the ones in the file you are about to import. Recordings made with deleted sequences will still be available for analysis, but you will not be able to make new recordings using those sequences. If you select add, the sequences in the file you are about to import will be added after the sequence is already imported. Step 8. Toby Studio will now import the sequences defined in the file you have selected. If any issues with the file or the sequences within it are detected during the import, you'll get information about this in a dialog window. The issues can either be severe enough for the import not to be able to complete, or of a kind that the import procedure itself can amend. It is possible to save a text file describing the issues, which can help you address them before you try to import the file again. Step 9. Once the import is completed, you'll get a notification telling you how many sequences were imported successfully and how many sequences are currently available for use when making new recordings. Once you have imported your sequences, you can start doing recordings. To do this, follow the following steps. Step 1. Ensure that the Presentation Sequences mode is selected in the Presentation mode selector in the Design and Record tab and that you have imported the sequences you want to use for your recordings. Step 2. Click on the Start Recording button and either create a new or select a previously used participant profile. Step 3. In the Start Recording dialog, select if you want to add the sequence name to the recording name. It is possible to add the sequence name as a suffix or as a prefix. Adding it as a prefix will allow for a simple sorting of the recordings in the recording lists in the Replay and Visualization tabs. The selected option will be kept for all following recordings in the same test until it's changed. Usually, this selection is only done for the first recording in a test. Step 4. After selecting how to name the recordings, select which sequence to use for the recording in the Presentation Sequence drop-down menu. Each line in the menu will give you the name of the available sequence. After the sequence name, the number of previously performed recordings where that sequence has been used is given within brackets. If no active selection is made, Toby Studio will iterate through the available presentation sequences automatically. After the last sequence in the list has been used for a recording, the next recording will be done using the first sequence listed. Step 5. When the Start Recording button is clicked, the recording will start and the elements will be presented in the order defined by the selected presentation sequence. After you've finished all your recordings, you might want to export your data for further analysis. When doing data analysis, knowing which order the elements were presented in can be very important. To simplify this, the option to include the sequence name in the data export is now available. The Presentation Sequence column can be found in the General Data section within the Data Export tab. Here is an example of what the export including the Presentation Sequence column might look like. Hopefully you now have an understanding of the three presentation modes in Toby Studio and how you can use them in your own research. For more helpful videos and information, please go to the Toby Pro website. Thank you for watching.